Hello Ethical Hackers and welcome to this new live session demo in which we're going to continue working on our challenges always inside WebGoat. If you don't know what WebGoat is or what are those challenges, well you can just head over to the YouTube channel and choose playlists and then you would find the OWASP Top 10 training playlist and here you have everything you need to know about both OWASP WebGoat and Juice Shop and the different vulnerabilities that you can try on your own. And the idea behind this live session playlist is to show you exactly what the hacking process is. For those of you who have been following, it's not really a smooth process. It involves a lot of rabbit holes and trial and error. So the aim of those videos is to educate you to raise the bar a little bit higher than your expectations so that when you are in front of a web application, you don't get disappointed or discouraged very quickly. In this video, we're going to tackle the, second ch the third challenge, admin password reset. So right away, we see that we have an input field where we can import, input our email address and the aim of the challenge is to try to reset the password for the admin user. Okay, so, so far it, it seems that we just have one field, so let's try to send that request and see how it looks like. Now, one neat feature of WebGoat is the uh, possibility to send yourself emails. What I mean by that is that if you input your username, in this case, I'm trying webgoat at whatever. So in this case, I just chose webgoat.com. It's just a dummy domain. And notice that I'm using here my username. So if I go to my user, you can see that it's webgoat, which is the same thing as I used here. Okay, so why is it, this is important, I will show you later. But let's activate our connection to burp using foxy proxy. This is all explained in the previously mentioned OWASP top 10 playlist. So if we hit reset password, we have here a response saying that an email has been sent to webgoat at webgoat.com. But where do we find this, this email? So before that, let's see what the requests looks like. Uh, let me just uh, remove this noisy requests that get repeated every seconds. So I'm just going to add this to scope and then go to the target and then a scope and then just edit that and remove all this remaining part. And these are the repeating requests and I want them out of scope. Meanwhile, I'm just going to filter for in-scope only items and let me remove the other one. And now we have just the requests that matter to us. In this case, we've sent the post request with our email, as you can see here. But notice that we have another parameter named token, which doesn't contain anything. So generally, this token is just a hidden input field. If we go back here and send another email, we can see that this is the request that we're triggering. And if we inspect this form, we can see that there is a hidden uh, input field indeed named um, token. Um, this is the name of the parameter. So. The backend server somehow expects us to send a token along with our email. And the response of the backend is that it sends an email to webgoat at webgoat.com. So let's go quickly to the other part of webgoat, which is webwolf. And this is the part I wanted to show you. So webwolf is running on port 1990, which is included as part of the OWASP top 10 training lab that I provided you with. You can download that from the description box or 
by following the OWASP Octane playlist. And you can use the same credentials as you have uh, in WebCode. It essentially has um, a mailbox, um, incoming requests, like um, a server that's listening for incoming requests. And here we can see that we have received the password reset uh, link. Now you see a lot of uh, requests here and that's because I've tried to record a video early on but I failed to save it and when I hit close somehow the video just got lost. We have here our uh, email that we received which contains a link and if we click on this link you can see that we're, we are redirected to port 8080 which is webgoat in this case and we have another endpoint here called password reset and there is a generated token that's appended to this endpoint when the backend receives that request it returns whether we are admin or not so this is not the reset link for the admin obviously if we uh, try to record this request we can play with it a little bit. So if we send this to the repeater, this is like the request I guess we should play with in order to bypass the verification. The first one allows us to send the email containing the reset link. So let's send this, this also to our repeater. And so the first thing that I want to try is to experiment a little bit with this part here because obviously this is the parameter that the backend tries to process so I will just try to fuzz this input and see how the backend responds so I'm just going to send a malformed uh, token and it tells me that it's not the reset link for admin now if I try to like send nothing I get a not found error which means that there is no handler for for that endpoint but let me just add a slash here and see okay same thing so let's try to inject a quote just to see if there is any kind of uh, SQL query behind the scenes and same error um, can try something dummy or maybe no but I think we can't put anything that would like oh here we have an exception I love exceptions so the request was rejected because the URL was not normalized okay so this is just um, an exception triggered because the URL is malformed or otherwise not normalized okay okay so I don't think this part is vulnerable so let's try to see if we can uh, trick the back end to serve as the token of the admin so if we send um, like maybe the admin username is admin so let's do that and send that it says that it's sending an email to admin so here we have 12 but if we refresh we still have 12 so we didn't receive anything but maybe we can try parameter pollution so if I add here the same parameter twice but in this case using webcode what does the backend do so if we send that we have a slightly different output there is an email sent to admin and there is a comma here so maybe it takes an array of those two elements and sends them an email so let's verify if we have any new incoming email um, sadly not let's switch those Okay, let's see if we have anything. Okay, so now we've got 
another one because here it says that there are 13 emails and let's click on this uh, password reset link and see if we get anything hmm. so it doesn't seem to work so parameter pollution is not working maybe we can just append another email using maybe SMTP injection so in this case the SMTP server would send an email to both of them but using either the username what goes for admin we don't know how the backend works okay so now we have this sent to maybe both of them so let's refresh and see okay so we have a password reset link here we because we received another email and we have the same problem okay so maybe we could switch those all right and now if we refresh we get no email okay um, what else we can do can we send something in the token and see what the backend says mm, same response okay so I wonder how the backend works behind the scenes and fortunately for us webgoat is an open source project so I think you need to develop this reflex of whenever having a chance to see the source code you should do it so in this case Let's go to WebGoat on GitHub and see how the feature is actually developed. So let's choose the release that we deployed on the lab, which is in this case M26. And um, actually, let me just go straight into the source code and choose a tag that corresponds to my version. And let's go to the lessons. And there should be something related to challenges. Okay, so maybe this one contains our code. Let's go to the source, main, challenges. Okay, so here we have challenge seven, which is the one we are targeting. And now if we go to assignment, um, you can see right here that we have our template and here is the get mapping the get handler that takes the link as um, a parameter so this is the feature that we are looking for so if we if you remember this is our request a get request to reset password and then the link as input so this is the, the method that's handling this feature and so we take the path variable uh, named link and then we test if it's equal to a constant okay so this admin password link constant is um, a part of the solution constants object so or class in this case because here it's capital case and if it's if it does then it returns an image with a flag okay but otherwise it returns that it's not the reset link for admin which is the current message that we are receiving here so it seems that the token of the admin is hard-coded in this class so let's look for the solution constants class I'm just going to see where it's located. So solution is constant is part of the challenges package here. Okay, so this is our class and it defines some attributes and one of them is the password link. So this is clearly a violation of how password reset links are meant to be. They should never be static, never should be hard-coded, and never should be committed to a GitHub repository, publicly exposed. So let's copy this and verify if indeed this is 
the right uh, token. And we get a success with our flag. I really want to see that cat image though, so I'm just going to copy this URL and paste it right here. Oh, yeah. So let's copy this and validate our challenge. Okay, so we've learned that whenever you have the chance to look through the code in a white box approach, you should do it because it will give you a clear view of how the feature is implemented. So I hope this was helpful to you. Next time we will tackle the final challenge named without account. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.